Hey guys and welcome to this new episode of Time Counters, an episode dedicated to your videos. And here we are with another fun episode dedicated to your watches and your collections. What we like to observe, look at, and try to understand is your career path first and foremost, and then also the watches. The watches especially for what my little monkey wants to see, not for anything else. Well, then, from a human point of view, your career path is interesting. Why do you choose watches? Where do you get them from? The legacies they can bring with them. There's also a whole story behind it, right? Interesting, very interesting storytelling. Having said that, now I would like to wish you all a Merry Christmas, right? As usual, because we've decorated, so let's start with the very nice, well done, well done Santa Claus, who made us the daily jingle, as they say. We're all happy, we're all better. Red, gold, green, EH, the holidays that bring goodness with them. But that's not my case. In my case, the Grinch in me turns into an inquisitive finger that points at you, at your watches, trying to make you understand where you can improve. In my opinion, clearly, it's not like all that glitters is gold or all my own doing or red in the evening, good weather, hopefully. No, it doesn't work like that. I'll show you the watch of the day, which is this beautiful Long and Admiral from 1973 with the L63 caliber that also rhymes, which is none other than Lita 2824. A beautiful little square shaped watch. Now, clearly, in winter, the wrist narrows, but that's all, and so I stretch out, but that's how it works, in the cold the wrist narrows, in the heat of the summer it widens, right? So we also have to find a way, now I should take it apart, no, I won't take it apart, I'll wear it like this. I change my watch three times a day, soon, okay, enough with the useless talk. Let's take a look at your videos and get started right away, fire. Hi Davi Day. Hi. This is the video of my collection. Of course. An extraordinary collection of emblematic pieces. But who is Verdone? Verdone when you make emblematic characters. Okay, let's take a look, since we're here at your table, because you put your details in there, right? Mgiver, the complete series. I've never looked at it in my life, I don't know. In a little while, what is a Swiss army knife, you would say? Let's say, pocket. A pocket knife, a giraffe. It's a sort of Rubik's Cube of the future, a spaceship. What is it? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, let's hear it. Tell us a bit about your collection in your fake voice. Okay. All good stuff. Let's start with this Garmin Instinct that you don't like, but it's actually the watch of my adventures. Ah. Uh. With this I practice all the impossible and unimaginable explorations. Mountains, lakes, rivers, seas, caves. And so on. Speaking of caves and speaking of. Cesra, this is the key. Kasira, don't you have anything to say? Kasira, okay. The first watch in the collection is the watch given to me by my grandfather. I mean actually it wasn't given to me by my grandfather, it was given to me when my grandfather passed away. It's his watch, from the post-war period, that he bought on his first day at work. A poor man, who risked dying of hunger, bought this zenith. Then I discovered, once I opened it, that it actually houses the movement of I think a psycho. Because, over the years, surely one of them got torn, broken the watchmaker changed it. It's still a heirloom. Yeah, okay. Original Zenith modified in honor of Grandpa. Hi Grandpa. Okay, let's take it this way. Second watch. Dad's gold Zenith. What's inside? Gold Zenith given to him for his 18th birthday, which he never wore because his wrist sweats. 
I recovered it, restored it, and the crown isn't his, but it has its own reason, come on, it looks like his spit. I don't know, guys, if that's the case, you have Frank and Watch in this family. I don't trust this one either, this case shape, the black hands on the gold case, the printed Arabic numerals. I don't know, you decide, I don't know, friends, tell me what you think. Tell me yours in the comments below, I don't know. Huh, what do you think? I told you. Third watch. Doubts, doubts. Sesra. Seshi. This is starting to become one of my purchases. The watch you do things with. I sent it to you in a summer postcard. Well done. An extraordinary postcard from the Phlegrean Fields. Um, I want to tell our friends that this watch is the Phoebos Leviathan, notice the case back. Sure. To which I put this amazing, um. Oh oh. NATO, Cesira tells me, well done, I forgot what it's called. On NATO and a nice one to say beautiful. Uh, it's big because it's a nice watch, but I have a 20 centimeters wrist, so it fits, it fits. You'll be happy, Cesar. Okay, Cesra, please. The next one. This is the Seiko Mini Turtle. A gift from my mother, because I don't buy, no, it's not true, I buy, but my mother gave me this. Well, the value of this watch is given by the bezel because it is not the classic ratchet bezel. But it is a bezel that slides like a rubber band on another rubber band and it is equipped with cardinal points to orient yourself with the sun and the hour hand. This is wrong. The problem is that I discovered that it is actually a bit annoying the fact that you have to remember whether it is daylight saving time or standard time, because in one of the two cases you have to subtract an hour. So you are in the middle of the ocean, because you fell off a cliff and you have to orient yourself to know where north is and where south is. But maybe you don't remember if it is daylight saving time or standard time, it could be a problem. But you just have to remember which hemisphere you are in, so you know which half, let's say, of the dial to use to use north and south. Okay. Sesira. And then here it is. Here is the gift from Sesira, an extraordinary woman. Sesira, on the advice of a little bird, my little bird. Bought it for my upcoming birthday, I'm just turning 20. For two, it's the Zeppelin LZ-126 Los Angeles. Quartz. So, in my opinion, this watch is really cool, but it doesn't do it justice in videos and photos. Let's see if I can see the wonderful reflections. Well. It doesn't do it justice, I have to say, in videos, in photos, because I had a lot of doubts about buying it, because I bought it online, I saw reviews, photos, but only when I held it in my hand, as Sikiolina used to say, did I understand its beauty. I appreciated its beauty. Davide says so, he's the one who quoted. Listen, she complains, quote, do you hear her? Well, it's beautiful, beautiful. I recommend it to all lovers, even though it's a quartz watch, but it's a beautiful quartz watch, guys. A quartz watch that deserves it, German. Well done. Here it is. Ah, oh. And when it resets like this with the little motor running, so much stuff, huh. Then and finally the final beast. What is? The top of the range? The one that will definitely make you appreciate my collection. A speedmaster that is also a seamaster, huh? Look, look, look how beautiful. It doesn't piss you off, huh? Look how beautiful. Speedmaster if master, huh? Quality. This one is also made with quality. Look, look, look at how much quality. But what is this? This one even has a quartz bezel. It comes off, it's a special model, a special technology. It comes off and reattaches with glue. But it's a fake. Fantastic. Tell me what you think. Don't think too much about. The last watch, but think about everything else. 
And very soon I'll show you the second part of my collection. Six more extraordinary watches soon on this channel. Cesira, do you mean love? Love. Cesira, what do you say? No one says that. Look, I would watch your video again to hear your love. Well done Cesira, she's the only one who saved from this whole video, because I'll give you a solid 4 for this video, I'll give you a solid 4, 2 vintage watches that in my opinion are half baked, one for sure, the other, I don't know, they'll have that value, no, of emotional legacy and we get emotional with you and that's fine, but they're two pieces of crap, then you have a I don't remember what those other two were. Thank goodness I don't remember anymore. Okay, she also had that, the smartwatch, she had it at the beginning like this too. Then a nice boss, a if wrong nice ones, those two are saved. But then there's the Zeppelina Quartz chronograph that Cesira gave you. I'm sorry Cesira, but you chose it because you said you chose it. So for that price you could have definitely gotten something more suitable. And then the last one was a fake, what was it, Speedum or M Quartz that turns like a 4. I'll give you a 4 just to vent. No, only Cesira is saved. I repeat, long live Cesira, down with your watches. Send me the others, maybe this was the low, low part of your collection. Send us that, you know, the real one. Come on, up until this point we were joking, huh? We were joking, we were joking. Next. Hi Davide, how are you? I hope everything is fine. I'm Andrea and I'm here to show you my little collection. But what a strange. Little collection because I just started, I thought, started in June, in fact it's a rather meager collection. Well, okay. But it's very, very nice, full of emotions, let's say, full of emotions, very beautiful, let me show you. So, let's start with one of your praises. You can see it over there where my finger is here. Your favorite, it's an old one, the moon watch that I love. Okay, I have to explain the story to you, I mean, it's cool, I liked the collaboration. Well done. It's a plastic, a bioceramic, as they call it, but it's very cool, very beautiful, expensive. I was passionate about this. Chronograph, precisely, with the sphere of Saturn, I don't know what it's called, but it's very, very beautiful. What a fall. Damn, the rings. These are the colors, precisely. It's very beautiful, I liked it. Then we have other very beautiful ones. <coughs> Chofasau. Come on, it. Gives me crap, I'll be offended. Uh. No. This is a watch that a friend gave me a few days ago. Nice. Um. And it's, well, it's a coincidence, but he has like 20 of them all colored. I told him, wow, how cool. And he left it all broken, as you can see. Uh, but it's a watch that I use a lot. Maybe with something I do these things. Maybe I wear a suit, something. Even if I don't know from. Anyway, when I dress elegantly I wear something like this underneath that breaks it up and gives a bit of, well, contrast, right? Interesting. Okay, second thing, second, third piece, actually this is the first watch my dad gave me, which I, since I became passionate about it in June, never wore. And he put it on. He practically gave himself a present, in fact, you see it's scratched and this automatic swatch that I'm wearing a lot now, as you can see. Beautiful, very, very, beautiful, the case back, the movement is visible. With a little cover and it's a watch. I don't know, I like it. The strap is a bit. Rickety, but very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Yes. Then, my dear, I'll show you two pieces instead that I recently bought, which are this Seiko 5 Sport, limited edition, pinup, called Snoopy. Ah, oh, this is nice. Nice. It's very nice. Case back. Yes, semi-visible. Movement. I saw this thing that I could probably remove, but anyway I'll leave it there. Leave it like this with Snoopy, see? It's A5, it's a SE5 Sport which is a bit more expensive than a normal SE. Well, precisely because it has this special feature, but I really like the dial, the face. This milky white, you know, with, you know, even the font of the hands and the indexes is really classic Snoopy. It's that font there, a bit funny, but classic, very nice. Oh, you know, on the crown it has Snoopy's paw. Oh, woof woof. Very elegant, 36 millimeters. Very elegant, in short. Perfect for my wrist. Very fun. A purchase I'm very, very proud of. Very, 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 everything, huh. And you're good. So, then second, third, fourth, I don't remember how many have been shown, but this is one of my favorite watches. Ah, well. And it's a Wheeler Veta. Wheeler Veta. Wheeler Veta. Wheeler Veta. 
It's wonderful, in short, wonderful. This is also a limited edition, Coppa Milano Sano, which is engraved on the case back, as you can see, but all. Just rewrite it. Excuse me, just a second, but you've been a fan since June, so it's only been a few months. You've been fishing for both the Seiko 5 Sport, the limited edition that costs more, and the Villerveta Diwind Heritage. What's Heritage? Which costs a little more? Definitely if it's limited. That's a strange thing, isn't it? Usually you get the standard models, at least when you start, so you go for the standards, right? But instead you spend a little more. This is nice. I like it a lot too. It's beautiful. What's on the dial? I don't know. The Coppa Milano Sanremo is engraved here. I don't know if you can see it. Coppa Milano Sanremo. But there are the Milano Sanremo machines. The reflective blue machines. Very nice. I like it a lot. A cowhide strap. I wear it a lot. Elegant and sporty too. In short, it's really cool. Come on. Nice. Dot. Very, very nice. <laughs> then Venus, Venus. I don't know how to say it, but it's beautiful. This belonged to my great-grandfather, my dad's grandfather. Full gold. How nice, huh? All gold, so no plated. Very nice. Mesh, you see the strap and bracelet. Excuse me, Milanese bracelet. Ah, a full god from the 50s. Look at its condition. It doesn't lose a few seconds. But anyway, it works perfectly, manual, beautiful. What can you say? Nice, huh? Very nice. I'd put a little patch here, huh? You see what kind of watch this is. Very, very nice. Huh, I gave it to you, huh. And then to close my collection I'll show you this piece. Well, it's the okay. Well, it's a bit more expensive, but it's my Rolex. Op. Oster Perpetual Green Dial. The watch, which is a bit of a dark green now, you can't see it well, but it's... Definitely wait, let me turn on the ring light from 2 seconds. There, you can't see it even less. Ah, uh, there you go. It's a watch that I really love, that I've worn a lot, I bought it this summer, maybe one of the first. Well, yes, I bought it before the Veta and before the Psycho, so, well, it's definitely probably the first watch I bought and the most important one I have at the moment. And it's a beautiful watch, beautiful in the summer, but also in the winter, I must say even in the winter on my wrist, well, I mean. Um, yes. So what can I tell you? That's it, I'm closing the collection a bit sadly, but very full of passion. Bye Davide, the videos are really cool. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. And that's it, I'll give you a nice six and a half for these watches. The Euer Perpetua 36. It's pretty, cute. It has a slightly large clasp, huh, but I don't know. A bit disproportionate compared to being 36, what do I know? But what do I know? And then the rest. Yes, nice and clean Valerveta. Five are the only watches you have. Come on, even that vintage one there. All gold, that makes sense. Yes, 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 yes. I can't give you six and a half more. Both for the cheerful, nice display, and for the watch. Beautiful, beautiful. Next video, come on, let's take a look. Hi Davide, I'm Nicola from San Remo and I wanted to show you my watch collection. Sure, go on. First, the only small case, the only quartz in the collection, but it will be used to keep time. Then Yema for Diver 38mm. Do. You like it? Another one, another Yem Navigraph Chrono. Wow, how nice. Wow. Bahu 7750. This one is nice, well done. After that, still in Europe, in Italy, HTT. Oh, this one is nice too, come on. Space B, Aquatic, Myota 9000 series. Then we move on to some Russians. Here we have this one from the 70s, this manual winding Bostock. Strange, huh? A military watch from the 80s. With raised numerals like this. Dot. Here, you see, there are. No caramates, caramates are various submarines. This one is a. Classic Russian functional watch. Then, still on Vostok, an amphibian GMT 41 millimeters. That, apart from the bezel, which is. Beautiful, has a nice case. I like this case. 
It almost makes me feel like a pillow. Beautiful. Well made, very much. A Pulsit 3133 from the 90s, the only white dial in the collection. Here, Pulsit 3133 is one of those chronographs that I sincerely recommend to those who want to spend a little money, to buy them used because they are new now, and this configuration here, like this, is nice, because usually if you go on eBay, I have been there many times, to look for these Palio 3133 chronographs, right? The whole story behind the caliber is that it was Swiss, and then they brought it to Russia. They are usually ugly in appearance. This one here really doesn't have that bezel. Sometimes they're chromed, sometimes they're gold-plated. This one here is nice and clean, nice, clearly manual winding. Well, the 3133 caliber gets a thumbs up. Then another PJO, the Traveler. Traveler. This one with a caliber derived from the 31 to the 33. Mondo, 24-hour caliber. This one should be the 3186. 3186 which is yes, it's a modern modification of the 3133. I don't even know where they make them now, but if they still make them to be honest because I know that the factory that makes the 313 has been closed for a while and then they moved production with the license to Europe, to Germany, I think. I don't know how the story ends here, guys, I don't know. Then the Buren. Buren, this Buren 38mm and with ETA caliber 2824. M, it's ugly. Limited edition of the Buren with these Swiss calibers. Bah. You have another Buren, this one that you also reviewed, automatic. I had it, it was mine. Always with the caliber 2824, then moving on to the Japan. Orient. Orient, a 38 Dratch child with a black dial. To tell the truth, I don't really like white dials, and... Then we have the Seiko Alpimist. Oh, the new one? Yes. Dot, 1959 with 6R35. Then one of the latest purchases, also Seiko, SPB451J. This is nice. A new representation of the 62. Nice. Nice. I got the blue one because I really like it with this Soleil dial. Yeah, nice, you know? Come on. 6R55M. The revised bracelet with the small links, it's Kanagawa Wave. Really nice watch. Oh, sure, we like it. It's still in the Orient. I got this San Martin, a proprietary design with a Seiko NH34 GMT. Nice, look. Well finished. Polished lugs, nice and thin. Grains of rice, but us screw links, micro adjustment. M to be a Chinese, low price, great performance, nice. Massimo. Then Singapore, sorry, Hong Kong, Phoebos. Phoebos, nice. Voyager 38mm, Malachite dial with New Hampshire 35. We like it. One of the latest purchases, also from Phoebos, the new Delphinus. This 4G Codrante, this light blue one there. The crown is recessed. Well, this one is also well made. You see this is a vertical satin finish with polished lugs. Interesting. Very well made. Coda 9000. Of course, the bracelet is also grains of rice with micro adjustment and so on. And then going to Singapore. Oh Singapore I got this Zelos. Zelos. Tracer Task with Myota Series 9000 True GMT. It's nicer too, come on. It has. World Time. Grade 2 Titanium, polished, if you can see the oscillating weight with the planisphere drawn, also well decorated. 
A nice movement, nice watch, light, very comfortable, it has an exceptional lumen. Like all zeros. Then we move on to Switzerland. Ah, uh, around the world here, huh? My dad's Omega watch. Ah, uh, well. Geneva 60. Geneva. All original, well restored. After that. Classic, come on. Hamilton Cackfield 38, seen and reviewed, H10 movement. It's a classic. Then we have Odia Super Seawolf. Holy cow, how many watches do you have? Mare. A green Soleil dial, STP 111 movement. Then the latest arrival at Mido Own Star 39 millimeters. Beautiful, beautiful. This movement is well made, derived from age. Oh. Uh. 2892. In the 31,111. Yes, if not wrong, wrong, anyway. Ah. Uh. Beautiful, very well made, thin, I like it a lot, I'll recite it. Oh. Then you don't. Usually see it much in a Formex channel. Formex Essence 39, beautiful watch, exceptional SV2 top grade movement, the Bore Grado Cosque. It has this case. Yeah. This patent for the springs. A. Little bit of crap, right? But very good. And there's also another little patent here by extension. Well done. Nice job. Ball. Well done. Well done. Another watch that I use a lot. Then RSV. I don't know. Comma. Chrono, Sport GMT, 42.5 in diameter, caliber 7754. Val. But. GMT. GMT. Chronograph GMT. Oh, but Christopher W65 Ombre Trident Limited Edition 500 pieces with this wonderful scratched bronze dial, bronze case. Celta SV2 Cosk movement, but beautiful watch. Last, but not least. Oh, or is B crown pointer date in bronze with the tobacco dial? Dot. Very nice, come on, this one too. And nothing, what can I say, I'm here, sorry, I'm a minute late. Thank you so much for the great videos you send us and the reviews you give us. Greetings to you and the entire community. Bye. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. You know what I noticed with great curiosity that you traveled around the world, I mean, there was an Italian watch, Swiss, English with Christopher W., then Russian, then Chinese, then Singapore, Hong Kong. We're missing Germany, France, France is mine, but even France is missing Germany, German. I didn't see anything. Wow, you traveled around the world. The friend who travels around the world with watches. The risk of watches. I give you a nice seven and a half. Seven and a half because they are all watches, practically all to my taste. Even the ones that aren't, then oh, it's a bit your own business, right? If you buy them, well, have fun with whatever you want. Beautiful, I would say. What struck me in particular? I don't know, because now I have to remember for a moment what was there. Well, the Russians are all nice. Well, if with that 62 mass case and I have it in my heart. And then it's beautiful, huh? The Formex, the particular Formex with those two patents there that are a bit. Namely the one for the elastic case. It's a bit of a waste, in the sense that it's a waste. It's not that it improves against impacts. If it takes a hit, it's the part that is cushioned and it has the same effect, right? But it's nice. I hope that this patent for the elastic case doesn't lead to an increase in thickness. The only thing is that because if, all things being equal, that is, if they had made it thinner for me without springs, then I would have preferred it thinner but without springs. Did I explain myself? Instead, it's interesting. The patent for the automatic adjustment closure, which is the first time I've seen it done like this, I don't quite understand if it's a butterfly closure. If it's a butterfly clasp, but I don't think so, I don't think so. I'll take a look at it for a moment. No, it's a single deployant, I think, or a butterfly, I don't know.
If it's a butterfly, it's a good system for quickly adjusting even butterfly clasps, which, as is well known, suffer from the inability to be adjusted on two feet, neither automatically nor manually. Anyway, give me a 7 and I gave it to you. Thanks friend for the watches that you presented, even quickly to fit in the 7 minutes. He made an 8 minute video, but I'll pass it on to you anyway for heaven's sake. In these cases, I don't pick hairs, right? I pick hairs when someone sends me a 25 minute or 16 minute video and knowingly says, yes, I made it a bit longer because it's still fine. No, it's not fine. You're not the one who makes the rules, eh. Period. Next video. Hi Davide, hi to all the friends of the channel. I am here and today I'm presenting my collection. These were a gift from my grandparents. They gave me this for my 18th birthday. I bought these after learning more about your videos. Let's take a look. Pulse, Quatsen, nothing special. Chochina. Festina. This big Chioeca Quazone. I'm going to the mall and I'm going to buy a bit of Quest. Go ahead, throw everything away. I'd like to know more about this. Also the reference, I tried to look it up, but I couldn't find anything. A vintage Festina. I'll take a look at the design of the Brightly Chronomat and I'll take this opportunity to ask you, has this always been an irrelevant watch manufacturer? In the past, was it like Lawrence and Braille that had quality? Let me know, I honestly don't know. Honestly, I have never studied Festina in the past, I mean, it is certainly a very important watchmaking group, even in the current history of watchmaking. Just think that they own Soprod, which makes the calibers, and Franz Busch, which makes the calibers. But I don't remember the other brands because the Festina group is very complex, so there must be other important brands. I don't know, I don't remember, I haven't studied. So I don't know if they did in the past, I just know that now they don't make luxury watches. It happened to me recently, my friend Giacomo showed it to me, look, why doesn't Festina take these watches into consideration? It was a diver's watch and I turned the bezel and the bezel was fixed. No, okay, nothing special, but from that point on I realized that they didn't start out with the idea of making something functional, dedicated to the enthusiast. I see them a bit more as, well, to make money. No, they do it, they want to make all the money, what a talk. It's not like someone sets up a company to make a loss, but usually someone is passionate about the passion, the passion for enthusiasts. Making watches, that one gets involved both emotionally and technically in a watch, and then I sell it to you. I make money, right? But only by making them to resemble something or come on, throw them away, come on, throw them in, boom vroom. A lot of money that I get, give it a little time. I mean then maybe they'll change gear, I don't know about that, but for now not for the story, then type, Festina history, on Google, you'll come up with studies, do a bit of research, you'll get there too. It's not like I have science infused here, you know, I do the research too. So anyone with a bit of common sense can do it. Of course, if it's for the sea. Secto. Was an 18th birthday present, as I told you. Nothing special, but we've already talked about the formula chronograph. I prefer it to the automatic because in my opinion, both in terms of the bezel, the crown and the overall design, it's more reminiscent of the 80s and 90s and much more responsive. I like it, I have to be honest, even if I turn it up. Okay. Carrera. I have to wind this stop. Nice. I think you'll like this. I love it from the dial to the construction. Calibra Vista. Caliber 5. Here it is. Let me know. I think you'll like it. It's nice. Yes. Oh. I bought this watch a few days ago because I've become very passionate about the Pulpicot Mison. They say it's excellent in terms of quality. I haven't been able to figure out what mechanism it has. Maybe you can. EH. EH. I don't know. The reference is this one here. 4103. Unfortunately, I have Cato, but it's a flop even on American sites. I wanted to ask you for some advice on buying an automatic Speedmaster, not the professional version, but the one with the Ghibli was made of steel, or an Aquara or a Monaco. Let me know. Oh, let's go by order because otherwise, let me know. I have to decide which one to buy. That's fine too. 
Okay, I don't know. Um, first of all, how'd I rate the entire collection? I'll give you a nice six and a half because between them, they're beautiful, gold watches. Come on, if you have half of it, you deserve it all. Then, as for the octopus, you can't find the caliber, I honestly don't know, I don't remember. I was looking for the octopus gentleman, that one, the gentleman's, it's 38, 40. I was looking for the one with the bracelet on eBay, right? I mean, it was there, I left it there, I looked for the best deal, then later, as usual, it happens, you move on, you move on, you look for something else, sometimes you hit it, sometimes you don't, but I liked it, I've always liked it, they make the watch in 38, 42, 40, I think they also have different sizes. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, it's an ETA 2892 that they put in there, if I'm not mistaken. I have a 2824 at most, but I think it's the 2892 for its thinness. In any case, I think you can find the search by searching. You don't have to do it, you have to stop at the first thing, look at the results, close it and go away. I mean go back and search for the second page, the third page, then start writing in English. The searches are a bit more complicated than stopping at the first one. In any case, it's a nice watch, I've always liked it. Then what should I buy between a Monaco C3 watches, a Monaco, an Aquaresser or a Speedmut Automatic? I think I understand. I don't know, honestly I don't know. That is, you have to decide what to buy and I don't like wearing the Monaco, but at this point, out of spite, I suggest you buy the Monaco. Buy the Monaco so you can buy a watch that I don't like. And you have to put up with it. The Monaco is an iconic watch, huh? expensive, right? So it also means that there is a certain amount of money available. You buy that one and go wherever you want. Go, go easy. Go, next video. Hi Davide. Hi. I'm Anthony from the province of Varez and I wish you happy holidays with this beautiful Marf. 38mm khaki Marf. Arms. Purchased from my friend Giacomo. Well done. Give him the money. Well done, well done. Hi Davide, I'm Fabrizio from Rimini. Hello, I'm here in Rimini in the central square. Ah. Beautiful. As you can see, it's a beautiful day, of course I'm kidding. The watch I'm wearing today is a mechanical Hamilton CF field. Here, it's a classic with a satin finished case, size 38. Well done. Military style, a watch we all know. Okay, guys, Merry Christmas to everyone. See you next time. Merry Christmas. Hi Davide. Warm greetings to you and the entire community. We are Elena and Davide from Rome. Hi Elena. Well, we met at the watch meeting this year. I don't know if you remember. I hope so, although there were a lot of people, so I don't know. Anyway, we wanted to show you. The little presents that Santa Claus left for us under the tree. I'll start. In the meantime, I'll show you the box that I think looks great under the Christmas tree. Well. And what's inside the box? Which is this gorgeous Omega Costella, a cool 29 millimeters. That fits my wrist perfectly. Well done. Instead, this year Santa Claus brought a Cartier Santos. Size this Santa Claus, huh? Since we were very good. Our monkeys were very naughty because they are never satisfied and can never have enough. Anyway, we will send you a video with the complete collection soon. Well done. Love, love, love. Elena, bye, see you next time. Thank you guys for these Christmas cards that are so useful and so cute. We're also happy to see your greetings, how you spend your time, how you put up the tree, how you make the nativity scene. I haven't seen the nativity scene yet. If someone could send us a Christmas card with the nativity scene that always lags behind the Christmas tree. They already have the presents here. I mean, it's already early December and they already have the presents ready. Not ready under the tree, already worn and so everyone is good. Fat Santa Claus gave her the Santos, and then he gave Elena the constellation, the female one. I recognized that one because it has the round date window, I saw it, I think. Okay, okay, come on guys, thank you for sending the videos, the cards and everything and thank you for making it this far. If you've made it this far, write one under the video. One means that you have come this far, huh, I am pleased. Thank you and I remind you of the regular appointments that, as always, are whenever I want, as often as possible here on YouTube Love.